Tonight, um, I'd like to welcome you to this forum with regards to the Nassau Regional High School building program. I'd like to start off the evening with some students from the high school going to play the national anthem for us. If you'd like to stand, please. So if you folks would have a seat at the tables, please, because we'd like to use the microphones when you speak and present any ideas you want to present to us. That'd be great. Um, so the way the evening's going to run is there are a couple of groups are going to speak to you today. Um, the owner project manager for the Nassau Regional High School Building Project, a company called Daedalus out of Boston. And we have our designer, our architectural team from Flansburg, Mr. Kent Kovacs will be the principal presenting the program tonight. But mostly we're having this session to get some input, some feedback from the citizens of the Nassau Regional School District on what you would like to see us include in the high school renovation program. You are the most important uh, folks involved in this uh, with regards to giving us your ideas. The students are being polled, the staff is being polled. We need input from the community members as well, um, which you'd like to see us potentially include for educational programs. Anything along those lines, there's no holes barred as far as ideas that we can Add to the program. So at this point, I'd like to have a quick introduction to. Please come on in, folks. Have a seat. Richard, you want to give it a shot? Thanks. Here, just hit the, refresh the computer here a little bit. And, uh, Hopefully. Evening. Uh, so I'll, I'll do the mic. I, I, I don't really need it. So I'm Richard Marks. Uh, as uh, as a uh, Greg said, we're the owner's project managers, Daedalus Projects in Boston with me. Uh, back there taking the picture is Aaron Letty, uh, who's going to work with us. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about how we've uh, gotten to this point in the project, which is still an early stage, but uh, one that's uh, already has some history. So uh, I think many of you know, uh, members of the building committee, we have several here tonight. Uh, maybe the building committee members, just in case people from the public don't know you, so you could just raise your hand or uh, introduce yourself. Why don't you just yeah, introduce yourself, sir? Uh, John O'Reilly with the Nassau Regional School Committee. Chris Easley, Nassau Regional School Committee, Wellfleet. Peter Wade, East Ham Finance Committee. Tom Ferrison on the staff at Nassau High School. Tom Conrad. Tom Conrad, Superintendent of Schools. <laughs> We don't have you outnumbered, but we're close. <laughs> <laughs> the gentlemen and women that uh, represent you um, on our 15, I think 15 member building committee, they're a very important group because they meet weekly or bi weekly to really be the judges of what we're doing and to assess what we're doing and give us immediate feedback on on the options that we have. So uh, feel free to reach out to them when you have concerns uh, and comments, and I'm sure they'll bring it to the larger group. So um, so as I said, my name is Richard Marks. We do have uh, substantial experience with large high school jobs. 
This is in our first rodeo. So we worked at Franklin High School, which is a model school, $101 million job, um, where they their only problem is more students are coming than we designed the school for because the MSBA sets enrollment uh, targets and uh, 200 additional students are coming because we built such a great new school, I think. And so uh, that's been uh, a wonderful thing for the town of Franklin. In uh, Boston, we just opened in September a, a 600 student STEM Academy uh, designed around project-based learning. We also did a renovation job with a small addition in Lemonster, a renovation addition in Rockland. Uh, we're starting construction this uh, spring on Belmont High School. Sorry about the feedback here. And uh, yeah, maybe if I speak. You want. Yeah, okay. um, and then lastly, uh, King Philip High School, we did an ad rental. So the point is, we don't really have a, a prescribed solution. Uh, Kent and his team will talk more about them soon. And us uh, realize that this is uh, an, an open decision in terms of the levels of renovation and the levels of addition that we'll be doing. And uh, Greg mentioned renovation. I think we understand that you have a great campus here, and the idea is to really look at all the options, and that's part of what we'll be talking about tonight. So, uh, the, you've, you've heard a lot through Cape Cod Tech and other sources about the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Uh, they are a state agency which is, uh, and I've looked at many of the state building uh, agencies around the Commonwealth, they are in my opinion the very best in the entire Commonwealth. So when you hear people, you know, saying, oh, the MSBA did this or that, know that these guys do what in my opinion is a really tremendous job of managing multiple school projects around the Commonwealth in a, in a very good way. So they are not a, uh, uh, a, a government authority by the governor. They're uh, a group that the board is appointed by the treasurer, and they are under the treasurer. Sheila Vanderhoek, who many of you know, is, is on the board, one of seven members of the board, so we have an insider there. Um, they have a dedicated revenue stream, and this is important because you know, where does the money come from? It comes from every time you spend a dollar at any retail store, one cent of that is going to fund the MSBA. That's true uh, all across the Commonwealth. So you're paying for the school in two ways. You're paying for it through property taxes, but every time you put uh, a, a penny into a sales tax, you know, into a dollar on your sales tax, you're funding the MSBA. What that does is it gives them a dedicated revenue stream of between 660 and 680 million dollars a year that then pays for bonds for schools around the Commonwealth. So they fund, as I said, about 14 or 15 per year. There's usually over 100 applicants uh, for those 15 uh, successful schools. So NAWCET, the reason we're here, it was successful. Uh, and we'll look at the history in just a minute. But so currently, the MSBA will reimburse 37.95%, called 38% of the eligible costs. For the feasibility study, which is the phase we're in now, they will, all the costs will be eligible, with just very, very minor exceptions. So um, then once we get to the next phase, which we'll also talk about, you'll actually increase that uh, reimbursement rate to about between 41 and 42%, because there are some bonus points that the district will be eligible. And we'll know that, again, better as we develop the costs more and know exactly what we're doing. And that could actually go up as high as 44 45% with renovation. So this is the MSBA process. I won't test you on this. It's all available on their website. And they have a really good website. So down at the bottom, you'll see it's, it's uh, massschoolsbuildings.org. And if you're interested in anything that we're doing, feel free to go on there and look at what we're doing and look at what phase the project is in. And you'll understand a little bit better why we're doing these things. So we're right now in module three, uh, which is the feasibility study. They don't have the best names. And over the summer, we'll uh, switch over to module four, uh, which will be the schematic design. Um, and then I should, should definitely touch on module five, because many of you will, will be part of this, hopefully, is funding the project. So this uh, project, because of its size, will require override votes, as they're called colloquially, colloquially uh, in the spring uh, of next year. So we anticipate in uh, March, April, May of next year that we'll be coming to the four towns and uh, asking you for a few dollars, um, probably more than you 
wish and less than we really need. Um, but we'll figure that out together. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. So even though we are at an early stage, as I said, there is some history uh, to the project. I think it's important that you realize uh, kind of the process that the project has gone through just to get to this point. Um, so the actual statement of interest was submitted in March of 2016. You were invited by the MSBA in February of 17 to, to uh, join. There's the stats on that particular year. 17 out of 87 were accepted. So um, it's a really great thing that you were accepted. So uh, then in the fall of 17, you approved funding for the feasibility study. And, uh, and in February 14th, the happy Valentine's Day of last year, um, you were invited by the MSBA to start uh, into the actual process. So in June, you made the brilliant decision to hire <laughs> us. Um, just saying if you're listening. And then, uh, so we, we were approved by the MSBA in July. And then the second brilliant decision was to hire Flansburg, which was done on October 16th. That, that's a, a process that the MSBA guides us through in which uh, there's about a 14-member selection committee, which includes three members from the, the cities, the towns here, um, voted, and, and Flansburg was the clear choice as the best architect for this project amongst those who submitted. So we're happy that Kent and his team are with us. So then we started educational programming, and that's been a fast-paced pro process. So as you see, we started really November 19th with our first uh, visioning session, as we've called it. So over that two-month period, there have been multiple sessions with, uh, as Greg said, students, community already in, in, uh, in uh, Orleans, thank you, uh, students, faculty, administration, faculty again, faculty again. So we've gotten a lot of input, but we're still in the very early stages. So you'll see as we go through the, the discussions here today that we really still are looking for blue sky ideas, as we're calling them. In, in, in other words, really the early stage. We want to come to you at an early stage, not because we, we don't know kind of what we think makes sense, but we really want to hear from the community as to what you feel are the priorities. We know what the faculty feels are priorities. We do know what the students feel are priorities. But the community, let's face it, you guys are paying the bills, so we really want your input. And the school is not intended to be uh, you know, a 7.30 a.m. or 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. school. This is intended to be a school that's used heavily by the community, not just once a year for a town meeting, but, but every single day of the year and, and weekends too, right, Tom? I think your your goal is to really make this a community-wide facility for the lower K. So, um, so where are we going? As you've heard the history, so we're obviously, as I mentioned, in the feasibility study in early 2019. We hope to have decisions on the uh, uh, options that we're going to further study uh, by the end of February. Um, then we will be taking that to the MSBA board for approval in June. Then we'll go into schematic design with that preferred option. And that will take us through the end of the year, 2019. And then we'll go, as I said, to the Springtown meeting sessions, if all goes well in April of 2020 uh, for funding. Um, if you are, are voting, all four towns vote in favor of the project, we'll move into what we call design development and construction documents, which is the, the detailed design work that goes behind it for completion May of 2021. And then finally, uh, the construction work will take place between then and, and as late as 2024. This is a long ride. And and we're in the very uh, beginnings of it in terms of, of this schedule, obviously two years into it in terms of the initial SOI. But uh, be patient with us, you know, and uh, make sure your fifth graders are excited about it because hopefully they'll see it as they're uh, juniors and seniors, sir. Just a quick question. Wait, on the, I missed it on fe February. What, what is that submission? The February submission is uh, the PDP, Preliminary Design Program. So that's really to start to hone in, and we've been working on this for the last six weeks, really, right, Ken? Um, yeah, this yeah. might give a better example. Yeah, and so uh, I think this is this is our slide, right? We're supposed to talk about this one, too. So yeah, uh, thanks. So, um, so what uh, Kent and his team have been doing uh, in parallel 
really a, a detailed existing condition study, and we'll summarize that. Visioning, as we call it, I'm not sure visioning is really a verb, but the, the, looking at the vision for the school and really thinking about those blue sky ideas. More detailed programming, which is really looking, and Kathy is setting this up with Chris, um, to really look at exactly what spaces and how they're used now, and we'll talk about how heavily they're being used within the existing building, and what we really think the uses of those are going to be over the next 10, 20, 30 years, which of course is the hard part. That's what we really need to vision. I don't think anybody in 1995, when the last edition was built, probably envisioned the way learning would happen today, um, and, but we're yet trying to design a school for 50 years. So that's the real challenge that we have, is trying to design enough flexibility into a school to make it useful in 2024 when we open, but also 2074 when it's still being used, hopefully, as a school. Um, so we're starting to look now at preliminary options, and then we'll refine those options and do some cost estimates and select the preferred option. So that's kind of the phase we're just entering into. But that's what I'm trying to just sure. so when you say select the preferred option, is that February? Well, no, it no. isn't. Okay. Yeah, we're just looking at, we're kind of defining what the options that we'll be looking at more carefully are. Yeah. So good question. Good question. Sure, sure. Um, are, what about the other towns? Do they help pay in? Like, Pizza yeah. Town, Tro? I know there's like some Harvish kids go. Sure. Uh, that and I know, yeah, Tom, maybe your best to answer. The, the question is uh, yes. who pays the capital cost of the sure. building? Um, on the re in a regional basis. Yeah, so right now it would be the four district communities, um, um, Brewster, Orleans, East Ham, and Wildflake. And, uh, and it's safe to say that uh, we're in some negotiations with our partnering schools uh, who send students for tuition. Now would be uh, Truro and Provincetown. And I believe it is safe to say in the near future um, where the demographics uh, population-wise, uh, there could be discussions about whether or not we would see uh, some option for um, uh, Province Town and, and Turo to consider joining the region. Right, because don't uh, they all go to Austin High School? Yeah, well, it's, it, they've been tuitioning in for years, and so I, I think there's a distinct possibility that there'll be discussions about that in, in the future. And the superintendents across the state have been spending a great deal of time this year looking at the demographic projections of students uh, for the next 20 years. And uh, I'm sorry to tell you, there's no uptick uh, in those numbers. It's so very flat, if anything, but just slightly down. So um, this is a question being asked across the entire Cape as we speak. So thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think uh, with that, yeah. I'll turn it over to you. And, uh, but I'm around the whole time if you have questions, and then we're going to be doing some exercises. So thank you very much. Great. Uh, thank you. Um, Kent Kovacs with Landsberg Architects. Um, very pleased to be here. I think this is a tremendous project. Um, we, uh, when we were hired for the project, we think we bring value. We focus on education for the last 50 years. Uh, Earl Flansberg, the founder, he was an early member of the Architects Collaborative that actually designed the original school. Um, so I was happy to work with Earl for a long time. And, his architecture and the sensitivity to the landscape has been instilled in all our work. And um, that's how we want to approach this project. We want to be sensitive to the educational goals, also to the environment. Um, so with that, we, uh, our firm right now focuses primarily on education. Um, we also do cultural and civic uh, projects, uh, theaters, performing arts, and other kind of uh, ventures. Uh, we do a lot of public schools with the MSBA, so we're very familiar with the process. I'll just go through that really quick. But also, we focus on independent schools and international schools. And so we're able to bring kind of a broad range of ideas uh, to this project. And that's what we're doing now. We're in the visioning process. And that's why you're so important to be engaged early on. So we've met with the faculty, the students, and um, Orleans already. And we're trying to get their input for the project. Uh, but just kind of going through the, the steps, we're in the, in the green zone right now, collecting information, looking at some options of addition uh, renovations uh, and new construction. We're required to do that. We actually, there's three tiers we need to look at. Um, a no build option, which is just bringing the existing school up to code. Um, we're gonna come up with a cost for that. 
but it does not meet educational standards. The MSBA, the Massachusetts School Building Authority, requires us to evaluate what does it take to bring your school up to code. Um, that's finishes as well, furniture, making sure that there's accessibility. Uh, right now there's a, a, a really uh, a, a big problem with accessibility uh, with, with somebody in a wheelchair getting class to class, and I'm going to explain that in a little bit. Um, so that's a code compliant option only. That's going to be the baseline. The next tier is looking at a variety of addition renovations, and we're going to come with varying degrees of that. Um, if we renovate 75%, 50%, even a little bit less, and add additions, and so we're going to balance out what that means as far as phasing, and then we'll look at all new construction. So just kind of giving you a broad range of where we're going to go. Um, that's going to happen pretty heavy in the blue zone over there. The uh, time frame for the PSR that gets submitted, as you see, to the MSBA board, that will be the, um, the preferred option, the selected option, will be submitted to the MSBA in June. And that's why this is important to get all the input, input from uh, the community. Does the tier that you decide to do uh, affect the amount of money that you would be getting from the MSBA? It, yes. It does. Yes. So. Uh, the MSBA gives uh, zero to five bonus points for renovation. They do that to help encourage school districts to renovate because they believe there's a benefit to that. And then that zero to five is based on the percentage of space that's renovated versus new. So uh, as Kent said, we're looking at, a, for example, a 75% renovation, 25% new scheme. We get 75% of five, 3.75 bonus points on top of that. 41 that I mentioned. So 41 plus 3.75, 44.75% in that particular case based on doing more renovation than new construction. Okay, it's kind of complicated, these formulas, but one, one of the things that we'll do as we start to assess the cost of all the options is look at what that reimbursable amount will be and how it will change <coughs> from option to option. It, and in conjunction with that, we'll also understand what the phasing implications mean in the extension on exactly. construction. They do not the, pay for modulars. The more renovation, the more disruption. Zero dollars. That's not an okay. That's zero dollars for temporary facilities. Why is phasing important? Phasing is important because when we begin to look at the different options, as Richard said, modular classrooms are not reimbursable right. by the state, which come quite costly. And so we need to know when we renovate, say, building N, so you have a campus of multiple buildings, when we renovate one of those wings, the kids need to go somewhere. Right. And usually that's a, a 10 month to 12 month duration where we need to swing them. So they need to either go into the gymnasium that's partitioned off into classrooms, uh, maybe the library we can carve up into classrooms. So we need to keep swinging children and teachers around the campus as we renovate a portion of the campus. And so when we look at the phasing, um, oftentimes a new construction that's standalone could be expedited a little faster um, because there's less disruption. Um, but there could be value to all the renovation options. And that's why the phasing, we need to understand the, the amount of uh, kind of movement and what the extent of the renovation would be and the disruption. And the other thing is, is inflation is working against us. So construction costs are inflating 3 to 5 percent. So the typical way to, be, right now you're using virtually every square foot of that building and they're occupied near many of the classrooms 100% of the time. So there's no swing space within the existing plan. So the traditional way to phase a project, as we say, is to build the new first, logically enough, move as many kids as possible in classrooms into the new construction, slamming them in sometimes until you can renovate, um, to minimize the amount of time and modules that you have. But Again, the, one of the most important, or the, the single most important thing we do is make sure that everybody can learn safely. And I mean safely from a construction point of view, right, so that we aren't seeing construction traffic and, and construction workers crossing with students. That's number one. But number two, right behind that, is maintaining a good educational environment because we don't want the kids who happen to be at Nauset for three years during construction to say, well, school was great, except all I could hear were hammers and, and uh, you know, cranes swinging. So we understand the importance of ongoing quality education at NOSIT, which means that we have to weigh all those factors as we look at 
what's going to be renovated versus new. Okay. Great. Thank you. So I'm just going to go through a couple slides rather quick because we want to hear from you and kind of get into the workshop part. Um, so when we look at this study scope, it's based on 905 students. That's the enrollment um, that's come from the uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority. And we've had uh, programming meetings with the uh, faculty, with the educational leadership team, and the Massachusetts School Building Authority has a standard space template, but that's just a starting point. They want to know what programs you're doing here that are unique to Nauset, and you need to add that to the template. And so we're looking at a school for um, 905 students at approximately uh, 228,000 uh, square feet. Again, this is ongoing because we're in that program phase and we're going to hone into what that number actually is. Here's a snapshot of the template that you can download. <laughs> Don't Let's squint. Let's walk through it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's meeting minutes from the school building meeting and trying to have very transparent. So you can go and you can see those categories broken out. So you can see how you're getting the 228. So there's programs that you have right now that are not in a template. Um, uh, computer labs, robotics labs, the uh, metalworks and the jewelry, that's not part of the template. And that's what's great about your campus. When you go there and you see that program, it's unbelievable. The MSBA came for a tour. They said, we've never seen anything like this. This is unbelievable. The ceramics is at a whole other level. And so they need you to populate what's in your curriculum that you do well and that you excel at. And they recognize that this is a, a, a very uh, a, you know, wonderful opportunity, and they want to hear from you and understand what you've been doing for a long time that makes you know, NOSIT so great. Uh, which means that their default template is going to get modified. They expect it. And right now, when we're tracking these programs, we're at about you know, 230,000 square feet. Um, Are you saying a, it's current or proposed? It's projected. Just proposed. It's proposed. Yeah. Yeah. It's proposed. Right now, you're at about 180. You're around, yes. Your current square footage is around 184,000 square feet. And I just want to add, and you can kind of see some of the space needs, you are teaching architecture classes, health classrooms, and corridors. The school is being incredibly resourceful. They were actually intended and designed as locker space. Those are classrooms, and they're open. There's no doors. Um, so as Richard said, uh, 17 out of 89 communities were brought into this phase. Uh, that's a great opportunity because they came to Nauset and said, you can't teach in corridors. Uh, we've seen your age facility and you need to correct it and you're on board. So everybody's in a really good spot right now and that's why we're here. Um, again, just kind of giving you a breakout. The, um, the red line uh, identifies where Nauset needs to be. Uh, so a few more classrooms. The blue is core academic. That's classrooms and science labs. So NOSIT tracks a little higher than the MSBA guideline. Uh, special education, you're kind of on the lower side of the state standard, uh, but we've had meetings with uh, the special education director, and those are programs they just don't have space for. Right now, they, they don't have the space. If they had the space, they would be able to use it. Um, art and music kind of levels out, but then the uh, vocations technology, that's the MSBA's category. That's your, your kind of metalworks, your robotics. You have two robotics programs, uh, which are really uh, uh, quite, um, uh, uh, um, I think what you're doing there is, is it's incredible. With one's focused kind of on drones, one's more science-based. Uh, so you see you're tracking a little higher with program you currently have. And so what's happening with the educational program and during this uh, preliminary design program, you're going to request uh, the MSBA to consider those for additional reimbursement. That's really what this means. Uh, health and PE, and I do want to point this out. Your existing gymnasium is 18,000 square feet. The MSBA standard is 12,000. Uh, a lot of districts go through this and say, you know, can we really do it in 12,000? And some do. Uh, what you have is 18, and when we met with the athletics and the uh, uh, physical education, it seems like you utilize the entire 18,000 square feet. So. Um, that may be a number, that additional 6,000 square feet may be something that the district uh, will have to support the renovations on their own. And that's part of the conversation. And they're your partners, um, and they want to they make it right. So just giving you kind of a, uh, a look at how you, we get to that 200 and um, kind of 30,000. Yeah. Um, our engineers came in in October, uh, mechanical, civil, landscape, uh, electrical. Uh, the, the architects, and we evaluated it. 
It's a campus that's served um, you well for nearly 50 years. It's an open campus concept, meaning that um, the children circulate to the different buildings, not in corridors, but in an outdoor corridor. Uh, so there are some security issues with that, and we have a security consultant who's coming next week to start the initial conversations on how do you maintain the open campus feel, but make it safe. Um, we have uh, exterior courtyards um, that, you know, are the circulation, again, the porous uh, campus that we need to look at for security, and then stormwater management. Some of the courtyards actually, when there's a, a, a large rainstorm, uh, sheet water into the auditorium gallery entrance. And so we need to fix that. There's a complete lack of it. And so what we're talking here for renovations, it's gut renovations. Even in the 1995 edition, it's a gut renovation because we need new systems. The 1995 edition does not have a fire protection system. So anything we do, we need to add that. We need proper ventilation within all the spaces. And those are some of the items that we've inventoried that any option uh, is going to be like new. So if it's a renovation, it's going to be like new. Okay. And just some quick notes there. It's an aged building. There's uh, very little uh, insulation, so it's a high operating cost. Uh, the fire protection system I mentioned, poor ventilation. You have unit ventilators that are aged in most of your classroom space, so that needs to be improved. And then accessibility. Uh, there are times when a person in a wheelchair needs to be lifted down a flight of stairs. And we heard through our meetings, we met with the students, um, uh, some particular students has taken uh, 30 minutes. To, it's a four minute transition, between, it's 20 minutes. It's, it's a four minute transition between classes. It took somebody in a wheelchair 20 minutes to transition within the block schedule. And they weren't upset about, you know, having the time and somebody kind of helping you out. They were upset that they lost an hour of class. That's what they were upset about. And that needs to be fixed because there's two elevators, but going through classrooms across the campus um, needs to be fixed, and the MSBA recognized that as well. So, uh, just a quick uh, uh, diagram of circulation, vehicular and internal. Uh, and then the visioning, just quickly. We've met with students, teachers, and then the community in Orleans. These are just some photos of the faculty in a workshop on January 2nd. Um, all at 90, we're at the all-day workshop, and then this is in Orleans last week, and now we're here. Um, so these are just takeaways, summarizing priorities from the faculty working group. So they said we need more teacher collaboration space. It'd be great to have you know technology everywhere, wherever you go. Greater visibility. It's a very inward-focused campus, even though there's uh, windows you can't see out of them, and even when you're in that outdoor classroom circulating, you can't see the trees beyond. And so how can we display great work that's happening, but also just get natural light in? And then they also just had some blue sky ideas, lecture halls for 50 to 70, black box theater, a student commons, which could be great, that's, not, that's outside the uh, library space. Um, you know, uh, uh, looking at your great programs that you have, marine biology, biotechnology, forensic, some uh, programs that might be unique to NOSIT. Uh, the campus has an all year uh, round uh, uh, facility. I want, you know, these blue sky ideas are not necessarily pie in the sky ideas. I want to stress that the black box theater is an example. We toured three schools uh, a couple of weeks ago and, and schools in Situate and, and uh, Plymouth that were MSBA funded. Both had terrific black box uh, facilities that are used for multiple purposes. They're not just for some odd play that happens three times a year. They were used for lectures. They were used for faculty meetings, used all the time. So. Uh, so I just want to stress that when we say blue sky, that's not necessarily something that can't be obtained even with the MSBA uh, reimbursement process. And I'll just go quickly. And then we yeah. met with the students, uh, performing arts, make the outdoor space more usable, you know, more purpose focused. And we thought that was a great comment. And then uh, they mentioned a pool would be great on the campus and also the student commons. And then uh, really uh, playing up sustainability. You know, how far can we put sustainability? We thought that was great from the students, and it created an overall awareness about sustainability. Uh, and then we also, with Orleans last week, um, outdoor space, sustainability, safety was a big concern, and then blue sky ideas, uh, more community um, use spaces. And that really brings us to where we are today. Um, just quickly, we're going to just show you some quick sh uh, uh, shots of inspiration. schools, inspiration. Uh, transparency, you're seeing what the students are doing, you're also getting natural light. Performing arts spaces, 
Uh, this is an MSBA project. This is a public school. These are the theaters that other districts are doing, um, and they attract outdoor uh, you know, uh, uh, companies to utilize their space as revenue. Um, outdoor learning spaces. We have a great landscape architect as part of this, uh, uh, Stimson Architects, Landscape Architects. And then sustainability. We really want to kind of push this um, as far as uh, we can go, and we're going to evaluate that, but we're hearing that kind of across the board, uh, honing into a net zero. And so that kind of brings us to the, where we are to date. And what we want to do now is, is take a moment and we're going to have kind of the first part of the workshop, is, which is priorities. So you're all generally in groups. And anybody from the public, we'd like you to join a table. And we're going to take about 10 minutes as a group. And we need one recorder. Um, but first, discuss. We're going to go around. And we want to hear about your priorities for this project. What's important to you? because now's the chance to get it on paper, and we're gonna record this. And so let's take 10, 15 minutes, and just talk amongst the group, and record, and we'll go around and answer any questions you may have. One empty table over here, if there are others you wanna. And especially if it's an idea that hasn't been brought up at uh, one of the other community forums, feel free to bring it up. Again, there's no, there's no dumb ideas, just the idea that isn't brought up to us is, you know, that you've thought of, and you haven't said it, so please. Uh, feel free to, to think creatively and out of the box. And we can go around and we'll, we can, you can ask us any questions you may have, but you could just really openly yeah, talk yeah, about what's important to you. Hi, I'm Debbie Evans. I'm sorry. 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 I'm
school's closing. The gym. Yeah. Well, he did refer to that and said they want to make it a community uh, building as well as. Uh, yeah, I just. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of towns have that. Yeah. They have everything going on there. Of course, we have that nice library here where you can have meetings now, or then right. this would have been great. But the, uh, the pool can be part of the community. Uh, yes, it can. I like it.
this automation, automation that's, that's coming, coming down the pipe. Mainly the automation. How to be unemployed? <laughs> all the curves. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's exactly it. Yeah. 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 We're wondering what's going to happen to those people. Are they all going to That's why we were so supportive of this week. That's it. Up to this point, it's been like recreating and having people more savvy. Usually, the job is going to be a whole different society. So, how are we going to prepare this community? So I love what kind of design is there? Do you know? Probably has that. That's why it's the problem solving. Problem solving. Because all everything, every technological thing we have is a design thing. Like this software and programs. Industrial design. Not just just design. How do you approach a problem by going through a process? Traveling around. Let's put let's problem with solving. Let's put problem 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 solving.
that somebody had a question about if we build the auditorium, would it be able to be rented and have dollars come to the town for things apart from school activities? Um, how does the outdoor learning work on Cape Cod? People had a question about that. Um, does the campus structure make sense with today's security issues and the cost? We know there's very, many, many buildings and many doors and so forth. Yeah. And uh, so the cost of that would be higher than if you were to have more compact building. Um, new doors and windows were replaced in that building about seven to ten years ago. We're still, we understand we're still paying for them. And so there's some financial issues. I probably can't use them. We'll have to keep paying for them even though we're not incorporating them into a new building. Uh, go ahead. Yep, no, no. We're all part of the study. <laughs> okay, so. yeah. Um, we felt that the pool, I, other people mentioned the pool, a community center and the Council on Aging, maybe, maybe those three items could be incorporated together in some fashion. Um, we feel that there should be more bathrooms. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's As given, compared yeah, to what they've now. And, and labs. Labs, that labs. Need, need more lab space. Does everyone know what a net zero building is? If you, if you don't, go ahead. Everybody's familiar with Produce that. Produce as much energy as you use. Exactly. Right. Exactly. We're doing, believe it or not, two schools now uh, that are planning to be net zero buildings. Um, two of the first in the Becoming the Uh, we talked about security, um, the open campus with natural interaction and outdoor learning space, um, having community access um, separate from classroom spaces, so organizing the buildings in a way that makes sense for that, uh, centralized location for community um, accessible parts, so making it clear where the community enters and what parts they have access to. Um, coverage for walkways without losing the open campus, uh, a green roof or a sort of net zero concept we also talked about with sustainability, um, having a building, this was more of a blue sky idea but we'll go there anyway, um, having a building located close to the water to take advantage of um, the environment that we live in. Um, for science purposes, ocean, fisheries, maritime, all those kinds of studies. Um, appropriate lab spaces and learning spaces, technology, and flexibility. So with whatever we plan, um, being able to shift things in the future. Great. All right. Thank you. Give uh, yourself a Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> They should provide pillows for old people to sit on. They're awful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Y
In terms of their big ideas, um, I did I did share with with one group the idea of outdoor heated classrooms that were bug proof. I was, I was shunned away a little. I think it's a good idea. Uh, I taught out in Southern California for a long time. They have those there. Now the climate's a little bit different, but technology is amazing. It's on the list. It's on there. Okay, it's on the list. It's on the list. Okay, it's on, it's on the list. Much about the bug proof. So we'll go around. We'll hear from from everyone. Um, and then we do want to provide a little bit of time to see if there are any lingering questions. We'll also be around afterwards if there are individual questions. And, and one of the things that would be helpful for us, we know it's a little bit cumbersome, but when we're looking at all of the data that's coming in from the students and the teachers and from the different towns, what we're trying to do is find patterns and identify priorities. Because ultimately, we're going to have to make a lot of decisions, and we're going to want something that's going to be consistent to tell us whether to go left or right. And the more we can make that decision based on what we've heard from everybody who's involved in the community, 
the better outcome we're going to have. As teachers, we have blind spots. As members in the community, you have blind spots. Students have blind spots. But they also see things from a very particular perspective, and we're trying to get as much of a 360 as we can. So we know that um, time is precious and people need to get home. You've got dots on your table. Um, red is number one, and blue is number two, and green is number three. And we'll write that down. Um, and if you can put that up as you go, that'll be helpful for us. Okay. Yellow, yellow, no other reason than that's what I said. Yeah. And yellow is they come in packets like this. Outdoor learning spaces again, uh, the possibility of using the demoed materials if there is demo materials um, and creating an artificial reef like some other school have done. Um, a motorized walkway, a greenhouse or farm space, and a cafe for students to work and interface with the community. This group? Uh, this group talked about a marine research lab, a swimming pool again, a community fitness or rehab facility, um, a greenhouse, and then outdoor garden space uh, to be integrated with the horticulture program. Great. Uh, we had the community center, as do several others. Uh, we had solar covered parking lot and walkways. Uh, we had using the building as an emergency shelter with generators that work. Uh, and we had a, a, there should be a relationship between the design of the building and, and the learning that goes in inside the building. Don't we have to put more stuff on we wanted to make money in the south of the sun to put those out, we see in all the classrooms to be important. So I know right now some psychology people come in and we have AC in those classrooms. Um, we set an athletic center with a pool, um, an environmental testing lab, um, kind of like that just student uh, school to work, um, where students can provide services kind of like what tech does. Um, and maybe we could draw some tech students back to NOSIT with that. Um, and then student small working rooms, kind of like a college-like feel, where they're like almost like pods, but like you can write on the walls and like you have technology in there. And then maybe more printers too. Independent research for students. Well, you have swimming pool, enhanced AC program, and outdoor learning space. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what, 70 acres, 72, uh, 72 acres. Wow. Uh, the, there's fields beyond the fields. Uh, you know, so we believe that there's not another suitable site within the four towns, uh, four current member towns for the school. So we are not looking at other sites. So that's more than adequate. It's more than adequate to build. If the decision is to build all new, we believe that could be still sited on the current campus. Uh, oh, I said three in the middle. So, um, listening to the, the quick description of the defects to the current buildings because of the code and so on, um, which I'm, I agree with, uh, are those numbers pointing very clearly to you need new construction? Or is it even no, remotely no, feasible to try to rehab the existing buildings, just in terms of fork in the road? It's completely feasible to rehab the buildings. Um, okay. The superstructure is completely intact with all the buildings. And it's designed in such a way that we actually can reconfigure it without too much major altercation, you know, alteration. Um, so those are what we're looking into. And so as far as looking at the schedule for looking at uh, options, we start that next month, and that goes into May. In May is when that selected option is going to kind of rise to the top. So we have about three and a half, four months to evaluate the options. And a lot of the legwork, the visioning, and the existing conditions will tell you exactly what you're getting at, what spaces are conducive and what spaces aren't. So that's a lot of the elimination game. Um, you know, we know that some classrooms in the end building do not meet state standards at all. They average out around 750, plus they have egress, so it's really a 720 square foot classroom. A minimum for the state is 850. Um, so we have all that background information, and then next month we really dive into the options. <coughs> So, so follow up to that same question, is, is there, given your, on the paper it looks like you're about 45, 50,000 square feet short of your target number, is, is there some version of that whereby you're building one or two new buildings and then utilizing that to sort of move people over because you, you're short, side, short sized right now and then utilize that space to move people over so they can phase it? Yes. Is that yes. Even considered? You're going to tell and we've shown some concepts where you where we add and take away. Yeah. We add, we take away twenty percent. We take away forty percent. We take away sixty percent, and add that it's remainder. On the but at the and it's on the website. Okay, thank you. And just when you any option right now is going to track at that after all the programming, the two hundred thirty thousand square foot right now, and that could go up and down. We're still in that process. Thank you. Uh, transportation is a big, big issue at the school. If you go to the furthest extreme of Brewster, do it someday, and drive at about uh, 8 o'clock in the morning down through here and see how long it takes to get here. And so if you can't, if you don't have an option on, on where to locate it, and it's got to be here, which makes sense to me, but how can you change that? And I have no idea what the answer is. But also the way uh, the, the uh, driveways and parking lots are configured aren't the most conducive thing. You're going to see the mess that's out there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe well, we have that. But, so I think transportation, and no, we're talking about buildings, but the grounds matter too. The parking is inadequate, uh, and more and more students want to drive. Uh, and the, the kind of cars we're driving are rapidly changing to nobody in it driving. They're all just sitting there, playing on their phones, and doing all that kind of stuff. So when you're thinking about how it's going to change over the next 50 years, no one will actually steer a car first, right? Or stop it, or, or start it, and that's going to hit this campus. And and you need to think about how are we going to handle cars that want to park themselves, cars that do everything on their own. But realize that in terms of the geography, Nauset is pretty well sited in terms of students coming all the way from Provincetown and from Brewster. So we have thought about that point living in Brewster. <laughs> Yeah. Has pointed it out to us, you know, I think, what is it, 20 minute, 22 minutes? From, from it's 18 miles from my house to the campus. Yeah, so that's what, 15 minutes for you, Greg, but for normal people. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> okay, but, but, you know, in terms of geographic uh, location, it is actually pretty well located in terms of drawing from Brewster to Provincetown. True. Yeah. It, you, you, noted, you pointed out that the uh, gymnasium is larger than the Massachusetts standard and the and that uh, we're going to have to appeal to try and get full funding for it. Are there any other areas in the school right now where we would not get the full funding from the state because they're too, too large? It, 
it's it's um, the auditorium is the only the gymnasium is the only space that is oversized. The auditorium is actually slightly undersized. undersized. Right, but in terms of the goal that people have of of having, for example, the whole uh, student body yes. be able to sit in the auditorium, which would be over 900 seats, that will be a big challenge because the MSBA, in their wisdom, designs for two thirds right on, yep. on a high school, yep. so 600 students. Yep. So a larger auditorium would require the, the town, the, the, town, to the district, 100 percent of the that additional, yeah. and, 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 yes. and okay. that also is the gymnasium. There, there'll be no appealing for that additional square footage. They're oh, really strict. That's it. We just have that's to it. That's it. So if you want the additional 6,000 square foot, if it's even in the existing and it's renovated, um, you still need to pay for that yeah. renovated space. Thank you. Just to clarify, those are really the big items. The auditoriums and the gyms are their kind of sticking points. Yeah. The, pool. the pool is... The oh, pool no, is something pool. that... We want, yeah, that we, pool. Want that pool. Yeah, we want the pool. <laughs> but think about your wallet because the MSBA will not... It's not, not eligible cost. It's not an eligible cost. Zero dollars. Oh, How about small they membership change. fee? I'll pay it. I'll pay it. <laughs> Have you guys considered or looked at population statistics going forward for the Outer Cape and how Absolutely. it's yeah. going down and not looking to increase at sure. all and applying that to the size that you build this or revamp this school and sure. how that sort of works out? So I'll, I'll, cut, I'll take that. Tom alluded to that at the beginning of the talk yeah. that, um, you know, we, we certainly realize that uh, the population of school-aged children is not likely to increase over the next 20, 30, 40 years. But what the MSBA does is they look at the growth factors that are occurring. They look at existing populations. I think the existing enrollment is 940. Nine yeah. So we're designing for 905. Um, it's tricky here, I'll be honest, because of school choice. I think everybody that uh, is familiar with Nauset knows a number of, of children come from literally every town on the Cape. Uh, so we have accounted for continued school choice being a, a positive for Nauset. Um, we think that especially with the new school, you're going to see that. But, of course, we're not looking at year one. We're trying to look at year five to ten as kind of the stabilized enrollment. But the MSBA has a very sophisticated process of enrollment projections that they do. They tend to be a little under. As I said, Franklin High was built for 1,600, and there's 1,800 kids in there. It's a little different because a number of kids were going to private and Catholic schools, the Varian, BC High, and so forth, and they're not anymore. If you're familiar with that area, they've come back to Franklin. That'll occur for some period of time, and then, you know, may wane as the school ages. But believe me, the MSBA does think about all that, and the 905, I think, is a good compromise number, um, and uh, that's what we're designing for, and, and no more, no less. Mm. I want to make a little pitch for the website. We gave a handout. Uh, this isn't Amazon. We, it is not a one click and we get the answer, and, and there's a reason for it. We don't advocate for anything. We're just trying to get the information out to the public. Erin, uh, who is here, and her colleague, Cristino, will be here tomorrow and, and Thursday for the next few sessions. We literally built this website from, from the ground up. We put all the content that the uh, building committee sees as fast as we can up on the website, but if there are things you don't see and you want to see, uh, let any of the school building committee members that we uh, that we introduced earlier, they'll bring that to the meeting. We'll try to put that up. Tom has been a tremendous advocate for transparency and for information. We're going to do cable TV shows. We're doing meetings like this. We'll continue to do meetings like this. We're going to meet the small groups around uh, the, the uh, lower Cape. Um, so certainly we're going to continue this community process, but this website we feel like is a, is a great way for you to just, if you can't come to a meeting or you're out of town uh, for, for a week or two in February, you want to know what's going on, please click on it and you'll see all the drawings, all the information that we've talked about tonight. We'll put all this information up on the website. So I just want to say this is a living, breathing document or, or, or media medium and, uh, and we'll continue to try to make it better. We're also putting together a tour of the high school. Um, it will be advertised and it will likely be on Fridays. We're designing as you come and probably be a 40 minute experience where we take you to different programs at the school and explain to you 
um, what's going on in that program, the limitations of the building, and what we could do um, with a different building. So it's kind of a, here's the current reality, you'd be there in the space, imagine what we could do if we had this, and then we do a little bit of our own blue sky with you, and you can go around. We're going to be offering that up. Um, we're putting it together now. As soon as we have it ready, we'll put word out into the community, and we welcome people to come and see where we are and see what we're doing with what we currently have. And please be ambassadors to the project, whether that's good or bad. Please talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, and, and really make them help them understand what's going on. Even if you just say, hey, they've got a website up, take a look at it, or uh, come to a meeting, or uh, you know, give a school building committee member a call, whatever, whatever makes sense for the, you and your neighbors. But it's important that the community play a significant role in this whole process, and we do genuinely want to hear from, from all of you. The meeting calendar on the website? There is a calendar, right, okay. Aaron? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Good. Awesome. That has upcoming meetings, agendas, minutes of past meetings. So. Great. Good. Thank Great. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everybody.